In Nigeria today, the terms of existence for us to continue as a nation has attracted deep concerns as many Nigerians have pointed to national dialogue as the way forward. Now, initially, the controversy on this conference was whether it should be sovereign or not. However, the federal government, in response to these yearnings, inaugurated the Presidential Advisory Committee on National Dialogue. However, the sincerity of this agenda has been questioned mainly by the opposition party who have raised some pertinent questions, which includes what happens to the outcome of the past confabs? Would it not clash with the constitutional provisions on the role of the National Assembly? And what will be the basis of representing the people at the National Conference? In our mission to set the record straight, Network Africa goes one-on-one -on -one with the Chairman National Advisory Committee on National Dialogue, Senator Femi Okurumu. So now let's just quickly go into the very burning issue, uh, the issue of national dialogue. It's been called different cliché from a national confab, a sovereign national conference and all that. Uh, it's been an issue of uh, controversy so far, and uh, you've been appointed the Chairman Presidential Advisory Committee on National Dialogue. Uh, Senator Femi Okoromo, could you just quickly tell us your terms of reference? Well, our uh, terms of reference consist in advising the President on a number of issues. One, what should constitute the agenda of the National Conference? Two, how large a conference, that is, what size, what size of a conference would be optimum? What size should we have? Three, how should the delegates to this conference be chosen? Four, what should be the duration of the conference? Five, what should be the structure of the conference? Six, the legal framework for the conference. What should be the legal framework upon which the conference will stand? And seven, the legal framework for transmitting the findings and recommendations of the conference itself when the conference holds. By what legal framework do we actually convert these resolutions and decisions to become part of our constitution and laws. Now, you've been going around the country, and one, that's one thing I really appreciate about uh, the issue of the National Conference, realizing that it is for Nigerians. But what has been their response so far? Everybody across the country, from north to south, east to west, now that we are all resolved that we are going to participate in this conference, and everybody is putting up their own, de their own demands. You talked about the generality of Nigerians endorsing this idea of national conference, but the report we got from some states uh, showed a clear contrary to this position. Uh, and one of such people was uh, Governor Adam Sashomole, who voiced a stronger position against the idea of the national conference. Could you tell us, uh, could you give us details about this? Well, first of all, the mere fact that we did not get an endorsement from Governor Oshio Mole does not mean that we did not get an endorsement from the people of Edo State. That is the important thing about this conference. It's a conference of the people, by the people, and for the people of Nigeria. Yes, the governor of Edo State did not think much will come out of this conference. But he was talking of his own party position. The, his party has, has taken that position. So everybody in his party was obliged to take that position. But unfortunately for him, his party position, which he, which he expressed, was in complete conflict with the position of his own people. His own people overwhelmingly endorsed this conference and came with their, with their memoranda. All the ethnic nationalities within the two state came endorsing the conference and telling us what they would like, how they would, the, the, what they would like as to modalities, as to what they think should be on the agenda, and so on. So if, I, if I, it was this that prompted the governor to want to address them, because the governor did not expect to see the kind of response that he saw. But when he just dropped in and he heard his own people talking, he then felt he wanted to address them, perhaps to correct them and tell them they were wrong. But then unfortunately the people knew what they were talking. The people didn't want to listen to him. Now when we look at the 
uh, Lagos State, for instance. Now, that's another state where we've had a strong reservation, uh, going by the comments of uh, Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinumbu, uh, who was very, very, who has been very, very skeptical about the idea of a national conference in this regime. Will, will Tinubu say that a year ago? Will he say that two years ago? Will he say that when he was funding Pronaco Conference, Pronaco National Conference, if it was one of those who funded it? Why, did, why was he funding those Pronaco Conferences, Pro National Conference, so, uh, Conference of Ethnic Nationalities? If he was already satisfied with the Basin Just Conference, why was he funding those? And in any case, I told you that the uh, governor of Edo State was only regurgitating a party position. You've not answered the last question. What was wrong with the result of the last confab? What was wrong with that was that it was not a conference of Nigerians, but Nigerians for Nigerians. I will tell you why. The Obasanjo's conference, Obasanjo nominated all the delegates. Uh, he and the governors nominated all the delegates. Some were nominated by Obasanjo. Then he mandated the state governors to nominate others. Then he picked a, a few, a few from the social cultural organizations like Afeni Ferry of Anese. Only one, only one delegate was allowed Afeni Ferry, and that was that delegate. One delegate was allowed of Anese. Apart from that, all the delegates were appointed by government. And there were no go areas. It was not everything we could talk about. A lot of things people want to talk about now, they could not talk about it. They could not talk about those issues during the Basin Just Conference. People were gagged. So it was not a conference of the people. Now let's just weigh uh, why the opposition party are clamoring against uh, this national conference, in spite of the fact that they have been, most of them have been ardent supporters of this idea in the past. Now, let's Permit me to play the devil's advocate now. Could there be an ambush in terms of the sincerity of this national conference? If we have been fighting for this national conference for more than two decades, I just, I just find that many presidents have been there who refused to convene it. We agitated before them, they refused. Now we finally have a president who has, who has consented that now we can have a national conference. You don't reject an opportunity to take something you have been looking for for more than two decades, just because you think the man may have some other motive. You grab it, whatever his motive may be. As long as what he's offering you is in your own interest, you grab it. Now, are we not merely begging the question now? Because when we look at the Constitution, the provisions of the Constitution, it stipulates that the National Assembly is the voice of the people. Now, when we look at also the issue of the National Conference, it may end up playing a dual role to the function of the National Assembly. If you, uh, if you want me to go into detail, for part of the grievances of people is that the present constitution we have is unfair to some sections of the country. That even, yeah. that even, the, even, the, par even the, the parameters for creating constituencies, for creating local government, for, for electing people into the National Assembly, this case was killed deliberately by some past rulers to favor sections of the country and put some other sections at a disadvantage. And that no matter what, nothing can pass through the National Assembly unless some, those sections want it to pass. So if you feel the Constitution has been rigged against you, how can you then expect that Constitution to, cor to, 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 to correct those problems? So the sovereignty that the National Assembly enjoys is a delegated sovereignty. And he who delegates can withdraw that delegation. If the people delegate authority to the National Assembly and they feel they are not, and they feel the National Assembly is not able to take care of their interests, they can withdraw that sovereignty and take it to themselves. It belongs to them. Senator Femi Okoromo, it's been a wonderful moment having you on this edition of Network Africa. In spite of your very busy schedule going around the country to convince Nigerians on the importance of the issue of the national dialogue. Thank you very much indeed.